people this week I have something very special for everybody it's called grime how to make your beats sound grimy this is one of many tricks that I use but I'm here to share it with you fellas man this is where we always turn some of these into beautiful beats man so uh without further ado this is weekend beat time hey you guys <coughs> so uh welcome to weekend beat time you know what this week i really do have something special for you guys man this is one of my favorite techniques when it comes to sampling um to really make things sound extra grimy uh, it's actually it's like to make it sound extra vintage, all right? I'm gonna show you guys a way of doing something with your hands, physically manipulating your music with your hands, man, all right? So that you can get expression out of it, out of your sampling, all right? This is a trick that I really did not wanna share <coughs> um, because I'm a greedy bastard, yeah? But, hey man, I gotta practice what I preach. I'm all about sharing, so let's get into it. What I'm gonna do, right? I'm going to make a really quick beat, all right? But uh, as I'm doing the sampling, I'm gonna show you guys uh, the trick and what I do, all right? So let's look at an overview. Let's do it, all right? Okay, right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to manipulate a record, all right? as your sampling so you can give it a vintage sound now i'm going to show you something on this uh sp404 it's not related to this all right you could do this on anything but this sampler you know come with me this sampler right here all right has a feature in it and the feature is called uh the vinyl uh, simulator all right let me play something all right let me play this and what the vinyl simulator does, it gets the sound, right? The sound wave, and it warps it. Oh, whoa, whoa, like that. All right, let me turn it on. Now that's very exaggerated. But you see how it bends the sound? All right. See? So what that's supposed to be doing, is simulating a vinyl, all right? Now let's go to my piece of crap uh, turntable here and have a look at why that's a vinyl simulator, why it says that, all right? Just follow, bear with me, just for one minute, all right? Bear with me, let's do it. All right guys, so the reason why it's a, it's a vinyl simulator is because the vinyls, when you look at them straight, right? Now these are just made of uh, a vinyl, really, like, um, like a type of plastic, right? Oh man, I, I don't know the exact specification of what the hell this is made of, all right? So just chill. Um, whatever it's made of anyway sometimes it used to warp right or you'd be playing it on your record player and as you'd be playing it if you looked at it on the side like that it'd be going up and down up and down what that would do is actually bend all right it would bend the sound and as it would uh, it would bend the record and as the needle would pass through the grooves right <clears throat> it would actually go whoa, whoa, whoa. it would warp all right, it will warp. Now, before you go start sticking your uh, records in the microwave, all right, there's a way of getting that sound, all right, even if your record isn't warped, right? Our ears are like attuned to hearing, uh, w when we hear that warping, it makes it sound vintage, all right? That's mainly because a lot of the analog sounds um, had that, you know, that, that were physically on materials, you know what I mean? And as it would pass through things, the, the motors were spinning them as they were passing through the readers, whether it was a, a needle or whether it was a, 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 a tape head or something like that, you'd get that warping sound coming through, you know what I mean? So I'm going to show you guys, let's make a beat, and my, my technique here guys is as I'm sampling, I am manipulating the record with my hands to give it an, 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 like a vintage grime sound, do you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make a microwave beat, all right? It's gonna be a quick beat, but it's going to demonstrate um, the differences, all right? I'll, I'll sample it, not using the technique, and then I'll sample it with the technique. We'll put it on the beat, 
and you'll see what I'm saying when it gives it a bit of a vintage sound. It gives it a real 90s sound. Man. Guys, so I found my sample, all right? This is the sample that I'm going to be using uh, here. Now, let me just play it without manipulating the sound, all right? So I'm going to be playing it here, and on my MPC, I'm going to be capturing it. Uh, this is obviously what I use to sample in. It doesn't matter what you use, all right? All that matters is that you're using vinyl and that you do this. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Alright guys, that's the sample, alright? Now, this is how I'm going to manipulate it, alright? Check this out. Listen to how beautiful it sounds when you mess with it a little, right? Yeah, let's play it. Let's play it. Let's play it. guys hear that you hear how how it sounds it sounds vintage you know what I mean now I'm going to explain to you very quickly how to do it and what not to do all right when the record is spinning as the record is spinning all right you need two things one is you need a dry finger I'm just saying all right if you've got a sticky finger it's not gonna be as easy to glide over the record okay so you need dry finger the second thing that you need to do, guys, is that you need to be going faster than the record. So as you're going around and as you're pushing the record around, right, you're sliding your finger over the top. You're getting a feel for it through your arm, right? You need to be going quicker. What we want is the sound to go up, sped up and slowed down, sped up and brought back to normal most samplers guys when you get those the LFO effect right actually slow it down and then up down and then up and there's a big difference alright you're able to curve the sound and give it that real vintage effect when those keys hit right at the top and then you speed them up it bends them and but it bends them even higher and it reminds me of um uh, of of animals and when kids cry and stuff, you know what I mean? They they, they they're kind of it, there's a sadness to it, man. You can get an you can get awesome expression through pianos, um, grand pianos. When you're sampling pianos and you use this technique, man, the samples are gonna sound. The, the samples are gonna express. The samples are gonna weep. Believe me. All right. Um, I often get fellas that hear my beats and they're like, man, you know, like, what are you using? You know what I mean? It, a lot of it, I think, is attributed to that sound. I don't explain to them how I do it. Uh, now it's too late. But that's how you get that sound. So I'm going to sample it in. All right? I'm going to sample it in. But just remember those two techniques, right? You need a dry finger to do it. And you need to speed it up as opposed to slowing it down. Just to quickly demonstrate, I don't want this video going forever. I'm sorry I'm talking so much, but let me quickly show you uh, the technique when you speed it up, and then I'll do it slowing it down. All right, check this out. I'm gonna comment as I'm doing it. All right, so you're running your fingers over the top like this, and on the beat. Down. Now guys, it's not um it's not not random, alright? You're not just doing it randomly, going fast, slowing down, you're going to the beat. That's what I mean, you're going to the beat, alright? Now let me do it uh, slowing it down, alright? Let, let me slow it down. And you'll see how it doesn't sound quite as the, quite the same. This is what all your LFOs are doing on your computer. 
Let me slow it down. This is the technique for slowing it down. It's the run. Like this. Yeah. See what I'm saying? It's just, it's not the same. It's not the same. So, um, I had sampled a couple of other uh, bits and pieces before that. So, I mean, this is our sample. Right, you know that, you know that one. Uh, this is another one that I sampled using the same technique. You can hear that bend coming through, you know what I mean? You could hear the, the record being manipulated. Here's another one. Really good. All right, um, and I got myself some drums too. All right, let's uh, let me put together just a really quick drum sequence, and let's just start messing with this beat a bit. All right, guys, so I've got a bit of a sequence here now. Let, let me just play this to you. L listen to this sample, guys. All right. Uh, yeah, listen to this sample. I mean, look how beautiful that sounds, man. Look how be listen to how beautiful that sounds. Listen to this. If you hear that, you can hear that sound crying. Um, just because uh, I want to be transparent, this was the original pitch of the sample. And I didn't pitch it down, sorry, I, I tuned it down. So it kind of stretches it as well. I like that because um, it's just going to bring out uh, more of the grime out of the sample when you pitch down. Uh, sorry, when you tune it down, not pitch down, you know. Because pitching down, guys, is going to change the key. Like if you're playing it on a different part of the piano, like a lower end of the piano or a higher end of the piano. But what it does is it doesn't actually stretch out the sound. Alright? By tuning it down, it kind of, it literally slows it down as though the record was playing slower. Alright? So this was the original one. That's where I kept it. On the um, MPC 1000, uh, tuning it down to minus five from whatever the original record is, tuning it down uh, it's intervals of minus three, minus five, minus nine, and twelve, and minus twelve. They're they're the uh, the main intervals. Uh, just in case you are using a a one thousand, right? I find they are the best tune downs um, for the machine. Really great stuff. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's put some, I'm gonna put some bass on it and uh, some of the other samples that I had, I'll see if I can add some extra stuff on top of it, alright, and then we'll come back. Alright guys, so I finished up the, um, well, I didn't add too much, I just added a, a little bit extra, I put the bass on, I put this on. You can hear it? You can hear that technique that I use, you know, on the records, just to make them sound vintage, man. Trust me. Just put that sort of stuff on. A little bit of bass, so good. So.
right, guys. Now, as you know, I was going to um, I was gonna do a comparison. You know what I mean? I was gonna get the the original. Uh, sorry, yeah, the original without us manipulating it, and then one with me manipulating it. But I thought the video is just gonna drag on for too long. You guys will definitely notice the difference. All right, so don't sweat it too much. All right, guys. That's it for me. Uh, my name's Alonso Magical. This was weekend beat time. Um, just to recap, guys, when you're sampling your record, have you you know dry your finger, run the record up. All right, run the record up, speed it up a little bit. Don't grab the whole record and push on it hard. All right, you're only gliding your finger, and you'll get to you'll draw a connection between you manipulating the record and the sound that's coming out, you'll gain a relationship with your vinyl um, and really bend those sounds, man. It's really awesome for lo-fi, for uh, grime, you know what I mean? It, it really, really exaggerates the um, the sincerity of the sample, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it's really good, man. So have fun with it, guys, uh, you know what I mean? And treat it well, yeah, don't thrash it, don't overdo it, uh, less is best. All right, so don't don't make yeah. You know what? Do whatever the fuck you want. All right, it's your it's your it's your uh, your beat, man. So um, until next time, guys. I'll catch you next week. Um, I'll be back on the weekend for weekend beat time. My name's Alonso Magical. Thank you so much for all the comments, guys. If you could um, if you guys can spread the love for me, man, I'd really appreciate that. All right, but uh, peace. Take care of yourselves and uh, remember, you know, stay off the crack. Do whatever you gotta do. You know what I mean. Thank you.